Hello students, good afternoon. My name is Michelle Law, and I am here to conduct a lecture on behalf of the Business Communication Unit. Today, my lesson is on telephone etiquette, and this is my second lesson on telephone etiquette. As I told you, uh, the lesson on telephone etiquette has been divided into two main lectures, and this is the second lesson, sorry, second lecture on telephone etiquette. So before I move on to today's lecture, first of all, let me briefly recap the previous lecture on telephone etiquette. So in our previous lecture on telephone etiquette, I covered a few important points. One of them was that I explained to you what is meant by telephone etiquette. Then I went on to talk about types of telephone etiquette and there are two main types of telephone, sorry, there are two types of telephone communications. The, those two main types are formal telephone communications and informal telephone communications. Then I explained to you the importance of a business telephone call and um, characteristics of a formal or, or business telephone conversation was discussed in our previous lecture on telephone etiquette. So these are the uh, expected learning outcomes of today's lesson on telephone etiquette. I will be teaching you on how to take a message to the telephone, then um, steps that you should take when you are transferring a call and uh, how you are supposed to end a telephone call in a very formal manner. And uh, I would, I would also like talk about handling customer complaints a little bit in detail because it's a um, very serious issue and, a, and it's a problem that most of the people who work in organizations uh, have to face. They find it a little difficult to uh, handle customer complaints. Therefore, I will be talking on that point uh, with uh, some extra details. So before I move on to today's lesson, I would like to know, sorry, I would like you to complete this activity, right? So in our previous lesson also, I told you a lot, I taught you a lot of telephone etiquette. So try to recap your knowledge on what I taught you. And I am also going to play a video. If you watch this video carefully, uh, you will remember the points that I taught you and you might even learn some more important telephone etiquettes. So use all those knowledge and then complete this activity. So before we go move on to this activity, I would like you to pay your attention to the slides of the previous lecture and also to the video that I will be playing. Hi there, my name is Emma and in today's video, I am going to teach you about the telephone and cell phones. Telephone English. I'm going to teach you some of my top tips on how to speak well when you're on the telephone. A lot of students get very, very scared when they talk on the telephone. Why is this? Well, you can't see the person's lips moving when you're on the telephone. And the English, it's sometimes difficult to understand what someone is saying. So it's okay. You can get better at talking on the telephone. 
and I'm going to tell you how. So let's get started. I have eight tips for you. Number one, one of the main problems um, students make when they're on the telephone is they're very direct. Okay. What does direct mean? Maybe they'll say something like, I want to talk to Mr. Um, Mr. Bob. Okay, I want to talk to Mr. Smith. This is very direct English. Why is it direct? Want. It's not the most polite way to speak. When you say, I want, I want. It's better when you're on the phone, especially to someone you don't know that well, to use polite English, such as could, would, may. May I speak to Mr. Bob? May I speak to Mr. Smith? Could you hold on a moment, please? Okay, it sounds a lot nicer. So remember your could, would, may. Try not to use want. Tip number two, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. But how do you practice? Who will you practice with? Well, one idea is if you know that there's a business and the business is closed for the day, you can call their, their um, telephone number. Maybe they have an answering machine you can listen to. What I would recommend is call a business you know will be closed, listen to their answering machine message, and try to take notes on what they say. And then call back and see, did what you hear, is it the same? Is it the same from the first time you called to the second time? Are your notes correct? So very key is practice. You can also practice with a friend. Um, you can practice in front of the mirror. Hello. Okay, so practice, practice, practice. Number three, spelling. A lot of the times we have to spell on the phone. Sometimes you have to spell your name, your last name, your address. So it's very important to be able to pronounce alphabet letters, A, B, C, D, E. So it's very important that you can say these letters correctly. And also that you, you know how to um, spell things out on the phone. So what do I mean by this? Well, for example, if you have to call someone and they need to write down your last name, and your last name is, um, we'll say your last name is um, White. So White. So you're on the phone and they say, what's your last name? My last name is White. And then you start spelling it. W as in Wilson, H as in Hilgar, <laughs> that's a weird name, but um, I as in Iceland. So what you do is you spell out your name using examples. So for example, if I'm spelling Emma, I'd say my name is Emma, that's E as in Aaron, M as in Mary, M as in Mary, A as in Anne. Why do we do this? It's because some English letters sound the same. If you're on the phone and you say P, D, T, V, they all sound so similar. By spelling out in this way, the person will know which letter you're talking about. Tip number four, numbers. A lot of the time when you talk on the phone, you have to use numbers or um, someone will, will tell you a number, and you may have to write it down. It's very important to practice your numbers, practice listening for numbers. So for example, a lot of students have trouble with 30 versus 13, okay? What's the difference? 30, the first part is, is long, thir, second part is short, t, 30 versus 13 where the first part of the number is short and the second part is long. So it's very important to get used to numbers like 14 versus 40, 15 versus 50, and you should also practice listening to long numbers. 
okay? Maybe if I say the number one, you understand that it's easy. But try to listen to this number. If I say four, 45, one, seven, eight, 10, 100. Maybe it would be more challenging. So practice your numbers. Number five, very important tip. Ask if you don't understand. A lot of students get nervous on the phone and they're too embarrassed to tell the person they're talking to, I don't understand. It's very important you tell the person that. Okay, so when you're on the phone, you can say, I'm sorry, can you repeat that please? Or I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Or um, I'm sorry, can you please slow down? I'm, my English is not strong. This will help for the other person on the line to slow down their English. And then hopefully you can hear what they're saying. Okay, so always ask for them to slow down if you don't understand. And you can ask them to repeat. Number six, it's very good to memorize. So remember key phone expressions, okay? What are some examples of these? Ring, ring, imagine someone's calling me. Hello? Okay, they say, is, is uh, Josh there? I say, oh, I'm sorry, he's not in. May I ask who's calling, please? A lot of the phone English, it's the same. You hear the same expressions again and again and again. Just remember these expressions. May I ask who's calling, please? Okay, is so-and-so there? If you remember these expressions, it will make talking on the phone a lot easier for you. Number seven, when you're on the phone, it's important to know if you should use formal or informal English. What's the difference? Formal English you would use maybe if you're talking to someone you don't know. Maybe if you work at a business, you might use this with a customer. Um, so it's, it's very polite English. Informal English is the English you would use with your friends. So it's important to know which phone expressions are formal and which ones are informal. An example of this, when I made a mistake, was one time in a job interview, somebody called me and they asked to speak to me and I said, oh hey, how's it going? This is very informal English. What I should have said is, how are you? Okay, so it's important to know the difference. Finally, the last tip, and a very important one, smile. When you smile when you're on the phone, it makes your brain think you're very happy and it will calm you down, okay? So you'll feel less nervous if you smile. And also people can usually hear if someone is smiling. It, it sounds weird, but it's true. When you're smiling, people can usually tell that you sound happier. So it's very good to smile um, when you answer the phone, when you call someone, have a smile on and you'll feel calmer. Okay, students, once again with our activity. So there are five sentences, right? The activity says, following are some examples of inappropriate usages in business telephone conversations. Rewrite them in a way that would make them formal, right? So number one says, hello, hello. I want to talk to Malini Pereira. Now, do we use such expressions in a business telephone conversation, right? So I want you to rewrite this using a more formal language. Then number two, it says, hello, what? I can't hear, lot of noise, speak louder, right? So you have to rewrite this sentence without changing the meaning, okay? What is actually um, being said here? Try to write it in a more formal manner, right? 
Then question number three. Hey, are you the secretary? I want to give a message to your finance manager, right? So the lady in the video also just explained to you about the using want and whether it's appropriate or not, right? So try to send, change this sentence as well. Number four, it says, who are you? This isn't a good time for me. I can't talk right now. Do we use such expressions? Can, can you remember the example I told you about the boy who lost his job, right? So try to write this sentence in a more, by using more formal language. Then number five, this is Royal Institute, why? In our previous lecture, I showed you so many examples on how to greet someone how you can greet someone, what are the expressions that you can use about the tone of your voice and so on and so forth, right? So try to use all those information and rewrite these sentences, but do not change the meaning, okay? But use a more formal language and write, rewrite these sentences so that it would look appropriate for a business telephone conversation. Okay, now I'm going to move on to today's lesson. Um, the first point I'm going to talk about is taking a message to the phone. So it is crucial to deliver the message to the person, sorry, to the person it is intended for as soon as possible and to maintain confidentiality with all messages. So what should happen when you take a message from the telephone? Number one, it is crucial to deliver the message to the person it is intended for. So you, if you get a message from someone, for example, if, it's, if the message is to Mr. Johan, you must make sure that you give the message to Mr. Johan itself. Right? Sometimes it can be a very personal matter, even though you do not know about it. And if Mr. Johan gets to know that about this message from someone else, it's not going to be good. It's going, it's not going to be good on you, right? Because the whoever called you gave you the message, right? And if you go on talking about it, and if some if Mr. Johan gets the message from someone else, it's not good. So make sure that you deliver the message only to the person who actually should get the message. Then what is the next point? As soon as possible, right? Don't take weeks, don't take months, right? As soon as possible, go and give the message to the respected person, right? To the intended person because Sometimes even after, after some time, even you might forget what the message was about, to whom it was supposed to give and so on and so forth, right? So, and if it was an urgent message and if, if, you, and if you actually delayed to give the message, then you are going to face unnecessary problems. And of course, what is the next most important thing that you need to keep in mind is to maintain confidentiality with all messages. So just, you might get messages to um, your friend, you might get messages to your manager, right? Oh. Just because uh, they are, there are differences in their position that they hold in the company, that doesn't mean that uh, confidentiality should be maintained only for messages that a manager receives. No, that's not true. Whatever message you get, whether it's for your friend, whether it's for a manager, make sure that you try to maintain confidentiality with all the messages that you receive. Okay, I have a question. What are the steps that you would follow to take a message to the phone? And what would you take down as a message? Now, for example, think that you are working at a company, or that you are working at an institution, most of you must 
we have in experience already. So what are the steps that you would take? If you, sorry, what are the steps that you would follow if you have to take a message through the phone? Just take a few minutes and think to yourself what you would do. Okay, I have a few points. Do they go with the points that you thought, thought to yourself? Right? I say a good phone message includes name of person for whom the message was. Name of person for whom the message was left. Right? So if it was for, if the message is to Mr. Johan, then you must write Mr. Johan. Okay? Name of person whom the message was left. So the message is, has to be given to Mr. Johan. Phone a king for media gun over up your gummy to peer key back to my put them is like digging key on key and name. Palavinia the name of person for whom the message was left. Up upon video, dear you take out of the key and a cup is another and Kalagata you think that tongue up it. Where I take a summarity, a put the lack of the kilometer. Then call, number two, caller's name. The one who called you. Okay, the caller's name. The one that Durukatana Matama Aragina, Miname Panuide, the Arna question, Mr. Yohantana, Miname Panuide, Mr. Yohanta, the Nikila, Kibukinagina, caller's name. So, for example, we would uh, let's think that it was Miss Pavitra called the company or the department and contact number sometimes this call might be from a, another company sorry sometimes it might be from another department of the particular company that uh, you are working itself right so you have to write down the department, department of marketing, finance, or whatever it is, or, or if it's a company, AB Brothers Limited, whatever the company name is, write down the company or the department. Even if you write down the company and the department, if it's a call from outside your company, then it's, it's totally fine. And contact number. Taking the contact number is also very important. So once you give the message to the relevant person, he, he or she wants to contact that person, then you already have the information. So that person do not have to worry searching for the caller's number because you already have it with you. Dear you to Kenagan Amat Apimatakitiagan Liagan Nori Durkatanam to Gatta Kenagan Amat Matakit Diagina Tiagan Nori Saha Ovadak Oho Avadakar and Ayatane Natnam Eka Anshak Samaharita Anshatiana then Oya Vadakar and Ayatane and Shaking Colleague I know in a window to long Venema Ayatane. Ithani King of Tumakina in that plum make Venom Ithani Aknang Eithani Namat Atnang Eithani Namasaha and share the Kamaliagata Kamakne Tamang Vedakar Nathan Emanang, Anivari, Kumuna and Shenda, Amatum Avikinika, Sanhan Karagan Nori. And the contact number Ek Pani de Dunakinage, phone number Tiagan Nori Mukode, Adala Kinata Pani de Dunat Passe. I had to only now call Kerala Balan day. We are longer a visa tino. It would have a handa phone number Kiliaga Nigat Kodak weather. Date and time. When did you receive the call? And the time. Fifth of fifth of June two thousand twenty one at two PM. This is very important for, for example, think that you, for because you were too busy, you totally forgot to 
give the message, right? In such an occasion, you can go and apologize and tell that so and so called on this particular day at this particular time and uh, this particular message was given, right? So having the date and time is also very important. Then what the message is. Durakatana Panmina me Panade, Mr. Yohanta then Kiela, call Kurbudavasa, Edi Vilavat Lila Tiaga. Saha Anivari Duna Panade Mukadikinika, Pahadiliva, Satan Kargan. No, you must have the correct message with you. Then you can also write down the action to be taken. What was actually he needed immediately. Did the caller uh, wanted him to call back or will the caller call the relevant person back or was it just mentioned urgent? So what a call karpa kena, Mr. Yohan kena kena hata na wata call karan na kela da kiwe nat nang e kena ma po call ya ganna kela da kiwe nat nang urgent hadisi kela they the Sandahan Kari. It's about a me wagging. We are Satana Tiagana. Funny day then a quarter. Men may Satana take Katama. Then negative the Kriya Margi Mukadi Kinika. Right? So you will give the message with the action that have to be taken. Either Mr. Johan will have to call, or else that particular, sorry, Miss, we took Miss Pavitra as example, or Miss Pavitra will call back. Oh, Miss Pavitra said that it is an urgent matter. So whatever this action is also, you will have to include in your message. Right? So if you think that there are other important points also, please make sure that you jot down those important points as well when you take a message. One more important thing that I didn't tell is that it's always important for you to have pen and paper ready with you. Sometimes um, you can never say the call that you get might be just a regular call or it might be a call that you actually need to take down a message. Therefore, it's very important that you have pen and paper also ready with you so that you can, without any trouble, get down the message soon and very clearly. Okay, my next point today is about transferring calls. There can be various reasons to transfer a call from being directed to the wrong person to speak to someone that can better handle their needs. Call like a gatta hamme ek call like a thava ke nikta trans karanle he tu gudakti an tien plong inge katta ma varadi tha varadi anshe ke da amatala vegna phuluwa he ha he mavastha kadi call like a dal anshe ke trans karanle sah anit karana thama samahar vite call like aave oyaru gunarta e call like in kine vistere hariye thamma. Yava Stavata, Munda Pilatura Denda, we are the very wind of Pulong. Eva Yava Stavaka, a pretty Pulong, call like a transfer. Right? So if a call is call has been directed to the wrong person, we will be transferring a phone call. Similarly, if you feel that you are, if there's a better person to handle the matter that the caller is talking about. Right, if you think that there's a better person who needs to handle this situation, then also you can transfer the call. Sometimes um, there are matters that have to go to the managerial level. In such occasions, you can speak to your manager and tell what the call is about, and then you can transfer the call to that particular person so that he would handle the situation better. It is important to give a reason as to why the call has to be transferred. So just don't say, like, like I taught you, when you have to keep someone on hold, like just don't say, uh, 
just a moment. You have to give a reason, right? Similarly, when you're transferring a call also, you need to give a reason as to why you are transferring the call, right? It will help to reduce the frustration of the caller. Sometimes the caller must have been going on and on with you for several minutes and all of a sudden you say, hold on, I'm going to transfer the call. So that means you are going to be very rude to the caller, right? So try to use a very formal, very polite language and give a reason as to why you need to call, sorry, why you need to transfer the call and then only you need to transfer the call. Then keep the call informed throughout the transfer process and provide all the necessary information. Like I told you before, sometimes you cannot directly transfer a call. Sometimes you might have to uh, take a few minutes and you might have to speak to your manager and say that th there is a caller on the line, sir, and he wants to discuss about this particular matter. So would you like to uh, speak to him? Right? You need to get permission from your manager before you transfer a call to your manager. And it's going to take some time, right? Sometimes your manager might be on another call. Then, the, then it's going to delay you on transferring the call. So it might take some time to actually transfer the call to the relevant person or to the relevant section of a particular company. Then also, you have to go back and uh, speak to the caller and tell that you are working on the matter and that he will get back to you and that the call will be transferred as soon as possible to the relevant person or to the relevant section of the company. Samara with Verdian Shagarana, again a call at a Giandana, sir Verdian Shakama, Amutalati in the Handa Mama server, Hari, Anshagati, Umkarana, Thoime Utsakaran. With the word of Transakaran, the Vodak Villa Gana, Samari, Anshi, line busy in the Puma. May call like a manager to none, they know, manage the call like a win the Puma. Evagi will have put a call like a Transakaran, the Thotika. Velayano. At the water, Sarin Sarid Gila, we may call it a Kataka like Yanone, Aiparakuine, Mukadda de Mankarane, Kiena, Deval, a caller, a pea, witting with the Matakaran. Questions What are your personal experiences in being transferred to another person, unit, or department through the phone? So sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes this happen, right? You might have and you might not have personal experiences, but if you have known how difficult, you would see that it's actually a wastage of time, right? You have been transferred to one section, then again to another section and to another person and so on and so forth, right? If that's happening, it's of, of course not good to the particular organization or institution or that particular company it's not good for their reputation right while it's affecting the reputation of the company it's also wasting your time and your money you might become annoyed you might even be stressed out right these are all things that can happen when you are continuously transferred in a phone call right so if you are working at a company and if someone calls you, you know, and if you also have the personal experience of being transferred from one person to another, make sure that you will not do that to the caller who calls you. Make sure that you will try your best to direct the person immediately to the correct section or to the correct person instead of wasting wasting the callers time and money and uh, without making him annoyed so these are phrases that can be used when you are transferring calls like i told you 
these are phrases that can be used, right? Even in the video that I showed you, the lady said that most of the phrases that are used in telephone conversations are always the same. You can use them again and again. You do not need to change them every time. Most of the time, it's the same set of words and phrases that are used in a telephone conversation. So it's always important to keep in mind a few of these phrases. So you can say, Mr. Ratnayaka, I am going to transfer you over to Ms. Kumara Singha in the training department. She will be able to help you. Her direct number is 540 444 in case you get disconnected. So if it was you that was handling Mr. Ratnayaka, now you are going to tell that you are going to transfer the call to someone named Miss Kumara Singha. Miss Kumara Singha. Why do you think it's important to give the name? Right? Then he also says she will be able to help you. And then more information is given and her direct number is given. These are very important because if the line suddenly gets disconnected, right? So for example, if a person was uh, in the line for a long time, he might run short of credit and it, he might get, the line might get disconnected, right? So since he was told, Mr. Ratnayaka was told that the call is going to be transferred to Ms. Kumar Singha, in the training department. Even if the line gets disconnected, next time Mr. Ratnayaka can directly call the company and ask for Ms. Kumara Singha, sorry, in the training department. That is one option. The other option is, since the direct number is also given, Mr. Ratnayaka can directly call Ms. Kumara Singha in the training department without any issue, without any problem, right? Call at transfer and someone transfer and any call like a killer key and a girl card the call like a transfer and then make a to Miss Kumara Singha Kena Mahatmir Dai call like a transfer and it's over Miss Kumara Singha Vedakar and a training department again. It's about a hard this year. Mr. Ratnayak call like a good akila in the rough phone like a sali him and a kiran. Then Mr. Ratnayak then no elan sari company get a katakarala. A katak a kian gram, but a Miss Kumar singing at a katakaran on a training department. It will be killing my department. Tikiano Tawat Twister de Latino, the Harnaki did a Miss Kumar singer contact Karan Karnapu and direct number de Latino. It over Mr. Ratnayak kissing a person at Naku, may may not make a dial karala. Miss Kumar Singh directly kata karan plan taat etu kote call leka transit karan ne gatha vena vilava kuda kardu yena. Mang kiyo tava karan yek tama me telephone eka kadi baavita karan vachana ekama vachana tama naavita naavita paavichi karan. E hinda mainna meva ke vachana purdu vela meva tu guru guru naam hari lesi kata karan mukda. May Vagi Avastavadi, call a transcurrent and Hamavastavaka Dima Vagi Api, Men May Vagi, Vachanatama Pavichika. Phone Nika Gatagama, Api Pata, Api Kiano Deval Matama, Kodak Pilavada, Phone Nika Kata, Api Salam, answer the road, Kiana, Vachana. It in Meva, Venus Fendi, Goda Durata, A Vachana, A Vidyama Pavichika and Okay, the second one says, Please hold the line. I am going to connect you to the dean's office. So if you take a call to the university, and if you say that you are going to, uh, you need to speak to someone in the dean's office, first of all, you will be asked to hold the line and then you will be transferred. Then please hold the line. I will put you through to the marketing department. So although the 
person who took the call or the person who answered the call would say, please hold the line. It's not that you are going to be on the line for a long time. It's just that uh, whoever is going to transfer this call is using a very polite language, right? So that's why they say, please hold the line. I'm going to connect you to the dean's office. Oh, please hold the line. I will put you through to the marketing department. They are being very polite and very nice in the way that they are speaking to you. Okay, now we have a listening activity. This listening activity is actually available in the manual itself, right? So if you want, you can uh, you take the manual and you can complete this. You can fill in the blanks and complete this listening activity. Give me a minute, I will now share the video and then we will move on to do the listening activity. He's back here to Australia, and I took out insurance with your company. Some items were damaged during the move, so I need to make a claim. What do I have to do? Okay, well, first I need to get a few details about this. Can you give me your name, please? Yes, it's Michael Alexander. Okay, and your address, please? My old address or my current one? Your current one. It's 24 Manly Street, Milpera, near Sydney. What was the suburb, sorry? Milpera. M-I-L-P-E-R-R-A. Right. Now, who was the shipping agent, Mr Alexander? Mm, you mean the company we used? Yes, the company who packed everything up at the point of origin. Oh, it was, um, uh, first class movers. Okay. Uh, where were the goods shipped from? China, but the ship came via Singapore and was there for about a week. Don't worry, all of that information will be in the documentation. Now, the dates. Do you know when the ship arrived? It left on the 11th of October and got to Sydney on the 28th of November. OK. I need one more thing. There's a reference number. It should be in the top right-hand corner of the pink form they gave you. Uh, let me have a look. Oh, I have so many papers. Ah, yes, here it is. It's 601 ACK. Thanks. Okay, students, I'm going to play the recording once more. Take this uh, time to re check your answers. And also, if you are unable to get the answers for the given blanks, try to get your answers correctly when I play this recording once more. shipped my belongings from overseas back here to Australia and I took out insurance with your company. Some items were damaged during the move so I need to make a claim. What do I have to do? Okay, well first I need to get a few details about this. Can you give me your name please? Yes, it's Michael Alexander. Okay, and your address please? My old address or my current one? Your current one. It's 24 Manly Street, Milpera, near Sydney. What was the suburb, sorry? Milpera. M-I-L-P-E-R-R-A. Right. Now, who was the shipping agent, Mr Alexander? Mm, you mean the company we used? Yes, the company who packed everything up at the point of origin. Oh, it was, um, uh, first class movers. Okay. Where were the goods shipped from? China, but the ship came via Singapore and was there for about a week. Don't worry, all of that information will be in the documentation. Now, the dates. Do you know when the ship arrived? It left on the 11th of October and got to Sydney on the 28th of November. OK. I need one more thing. There's a reference number. It should be in the top right-hand corner of the pink form they gave you. Uh, let me have a look. 
Oh, I have so many papers. Ah, uh, yes, here it is. It's 601-A-C-K. Thanks. Okay, students, so for the whole activity, there are only four blanks for you to fill. I hope that you have got the four blanks correct, the answers for the four blanks correctly. Okay, these are the answers for the listening activity. So for black number one, the question was, can you give me your name, please? And Michael says, yes, it's Michael Alexander. Then the second question was, uh, okay, now who, right? Now who was the shipping agent? The lady wanted to know the name of the shipping agent. The answer for the third blank is first class movers. So the shipping agent, the name of the shipping agent is first class movers. And the fourth blank was, do you know when the ship arrived? Judy wanted to know when the ship arrived. And so Michael gives the answer as uh, 28th of November. Okay, so, so check your answers with my answers and see whether they are correct uh, and see whether the spellings are also correct in your answers. Okay, now I'm going to give you example phrases on how to end a call. So phrases like, is there anything else I can help you with? Can be used to end a call. Or you can even say, thank you for calling. Have a pleasant day. You can even use both these phrases. Is there anything else I can help you with? So is there anything else I can help you with? If the answer is no, then you can say, thank you for calling. Have a pleasant day. Right, so this is a good way to end the telephone call. Make sure that you actually end the telephone call. Right, try your best to end the telephone call by using a phrase like this, right? So. From the very beginning to the very end, you will be having a very polite, a very formal conversation. If you use these first phrases that I have given as examples, and if you follow the guidelines that I have given you in my lectures. So my next slide is on handling customer complaints. I told, as I told you, I would like to talk about this in detail because um, uh, this is a problem that most of the people face when they work in a company. Since most of the uh, companies are, sorry, since most of the companies really do need their customers, they cannot be rude to their customers. In my last lecture, I told you if you be if you be rude on the phone, that there are uh, many issues that you will have to face. For example, you might lose your job, you might get complaints, disciplinary actions might be taken. So those are all outcomes of not dealing with a customer correctly. Because in the business world, it is normally considered that the customer is always right. So what you have to do is. If you, are, if you have to handle a difficult customer, you must know how to handle that customer, right? And I will give you a few tips 
that you can use when you are to handle a customer complaint or when you have to handle a difficult customer. Okay, next I have a video on how to handle customers. Let's listen to this lady and let's see what she has to say on handling customer complaints. Dealing with an upset customer may be the most difficult aspect of customer service. Hi, this is Jason. How can I help you this afternoon? You tell me. I'm looking at my new statement, and I see that you people have charged me again for the same fees I've been calling about for months now. I'm sick and tired of being told that it's handled when pretty clearly it's not. That's not easy to even listen to. So how do you respond to it in a way that will help? First, Remember that the customer isn't upset with you, they're upset with the situation. Don't take it personally. Then remind yourself that angry customers often struggle to be objective. So before trying to resolve the problem, it's important to diffuse the customer's frustration. So how do you do that? Start by allowing the customer to vent. It isn't easy and it's rarely pretty, but try not to interrupt or contradict the customer, even if you believe they're wrong. Confrontation will lead to escalation, and the goal is to calm the customer down so you can look for a solution. I'm so sorry to hear that. Let me take a look at your account and find out what's going on. Can you remind me when this started? Fine. The first fee showed up three months ago. If you can't fix this, I'm going to close the account. I completely understand your frustration. Let me see what I can do to help get this taken care of for you right now. Listening and responding with empathy helps diffuse the customer's frustration. This is one of the quickest ways to de-escalate tension. Listening with an open mind and expressing your understanding lets your customer know that you acknowledge their problem. Respond with your positive intent to take action to resolve the problem as best you can. Keep your focus on the customer and follow through on your desire to help them. I'm glad I was able to get that issue taken care of. It may take up to 24 hours for your account to show the changes, but you shouldn't see any more of these fees in the future. Thanks for working with me to figure it out. I want to apologize again for the inconvenience. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate your help. By removing the focus from yourself and staying focused on understanding and resolving the customer's problem, it's easier to stay detached and not get wrapped up in an emotional outburst. Maintaining an attitude of caring and concern helps to diffuse customer frustration. Allow them to vent as needed. Listen and respond with empathy. You'll never be able to work in customer service without running into angry, frustrated customers once in a while. But there are ways you can ease the tension and allow you both to work toward an acceptable solution. Okay, students, if you listened to that recording carefully, you might have noticed that this lady told a lot of important points on how to handle customer complaints, right? At the beginning, she said that well, not only handling, even listening to the customer's complaint is very difficult, right? It, even listening to the customer's complaint is a very difficult situation. But uh, the lady also said that Whoever the caller is, this customer who is complaining is actually upset with the situation and not with you. Therefore, you are not supposed to take it personally. Only if you take it personally, you would become frustrated by the situation, right? So do not take it personally and keep in mind that the customer who is complaining is actually upset with the situation and not with you. Then... Another important was to diffuse the customer's frustration, right? We must somehow find a way to lessen the customer's frustration, right? And also uh, we must allow the customer to vent. What is meant by vent? It means that we must give time to release, 
he has his or her emotions, right? That is by, what is meant by allow the customer to vent, right? Then we are not supposed to interrupt the customer, right? The customer, as you saw in the video, she was going on and on because she was so angry. In such a situation, you are not supposed to interrupt the customer or contradict what the customer was saying. Sometimes the customer might be totally wrong, but now, now it's not the time to say that the customer is wrong, right? Even if the customer is wrong, we have to behave in a way to show that we, we are totally agreeing with the customer, right? So one main goal is when you come across a customer that is complaining, you have to find a way to calm down the customer. That is also very important. Once you calm down the com customer, you will be able to have a good conversation with the customer and find a way to sort out the problem. You must also have empathy towards the customer. Acknowledge their problem, right? It means that you show you have to show them that you are actually accepting that this whole problem and that you are not going against the complaint. So those are very important points that were discussed in this video. So the, if you can remember my previous lecture, <clears throat> sorry, if you can remember, this lady was being very rude to this gentleman, right? Even though this gentleman was very kind to her and very nicely explaining the problem that he is facing, this lady wasn't very helpful. Whereas in today's conversation, the lady who made the complaint was very rude, whereas the caller, the person who took her call, sorry, the person who took her call was a very humble person and he was able to manage the situation very well. Even though this lady also managed the situation, she wasn't being very polite. She was being very rude to the caller, to the customer, whereas this gentleman was very polite, very nice, and he handled the situation very well. customer <laughs> A customer with Taraha Nivala, Prashne Tisandala, Tamai, Yalagi phone conversation with Ivaraka, make Mithana in the lady Prashna Tanam with the Maduna, Eunata, a lady, a chera Honda Vidhi Honda Bashawa, Sa Honda Kroma, Neve Ekamino to Pajikar. Now look at this slide. What I want to say that imagine that. This lady gave a call to this lady. If, the, if this lady called and complained to this lady on the right side, what would have happened, right? That is what I wanted to show you through this slide. Right? Right, so both are not in good terms. Both are not uh, being polite to each other. If this was the situation instead of this, then of course it's going. It would have ended up with a lot of problems. Therefore, if ever you have to handle a customer, try to, and if ever you have to handle a customer complain or an angry customer, try to use the method that this gentleman used instead of the method that this lady used. Okay, I also have a few more uh, points on how to handle customer complaints. Callers have an expectation on how they would like to be treated. And if you fail to meet that expectation, they become 
agitated. Right? So there's an expectation of the customers, right? They are already upset over something and they expect to be treated very well. They expect that their complaint will be taken seriously and that a solution would be given. That is the expectation of the customers. So if you fail to meet that expectation, they become agitated, right? So try to meet the customer's expectation and try to handle a customer complaint very well. There are a few steps that can be taken when dealing with a distressed caller. Do not overreact. So there are certain things that you can do. There's a limit in what you can do. So don't go to overreact. Don't um, go and say that, okay, I'm going to take this to the uh, head of our department. I'm going to uh, complain about this to the dean. So you're overreacting, right, to the situation. Do not overreact. Try to react in a manner that is suitable for the situation, right? Then. Listen completely to the complaint, right? So listen carefully, let the customer tell his or her total complaint and then only you have to speak. Only when they are finished should you comment. If the call is long distance, you might offer to call them back to avoid phone charges. This can have an immediate positive impact, right? So sometimes the caller, the call is going on for a long time and so as a favor, you can ask, would you like me to call you back, sir? Right? Would you like me to call you back, sir? You can say such a thing and it will have a positive, immediate positive impact. Most of the callers would like you to call him or her back because whatever time and money that the customer is wasting is because of fault of the particular company. So you must try to do something that would calm down the customer and something that would have a positive impact on the customer. Be positive, be honest, and be helpful. So always try to be positive. Try to tell the customer that you will try to solve this problem. Be honest, right? Don't lie to the customer. If the problem is not sorted out, don't try to hang up the phone saying, sir, I have sorted out your problem, right? When it's still as it was. Try to be honest, right? Even though it might take time, if it's taking a lot of time, you can, of course, as I said before, you can call back the customer and be helpful. Try to help as much as possible. Put yourself to that person's place. Have empathy. And then you would want to be helpful to the customer. A sincere voice will have a calming effect on the caller, right? So try to be as polite as kind as you can because the customer is already uh, very upset over the situation. Okay, that's all I have for today's um, lessons uh, to uh, students. And now I'm going to show you the 2017 exam paper, the question that was given on telephone etiquette. And after this, I have uh, an activity that I would like you to try on your own or even with one of your friends. First of all, let me share the uh, 2017 exam paper question on telephone etiquette. So students, I have copied and pasted, pasted the only the, only the question on telephone etiquette to another Word document, right? So this is the question. It says, given below is a telephone conversation between the personal assistant, PA, of the CEO of VK Group and Dahara, the president of the English Association of the Faculty of Management Studies and, sorry, Management Studies, Faculty of Management Studies. Dhara wants to get a sponsorship for their annual English Day concert. Complete the dialogue using the information given in brackets. So it's a conversation between the personal assistant and the president of the English, English Association of the Faculty of Management Studies. Uh, so her name is Dara and Dara wants to 
get a sponsorship for their annual English day. Now, what you have to do is you have to complete the dialogue using the information given in the brackets. So make sure that you use the information that is already given in the bracket. So the first blank, it says, there's a blank and uh, there are some information given in the bracket. You have to use this information and write a sentence or write a phrase as if it was said by the personal assistant. So you have to, the personal assistant greets, introduces the company, mentions the name. That is what is done by the personal assistant. So you get one and a half marks for writing the greeting, for introducing the company and for mentioning the name. How can I help you? Today, I am going to ask the telephone etiquette to ask the question. I am going to ask the personal मेनेजमेंट फैकल्टी एसोसिएशन शिष्य टेलीफोन कन्वर्सेशन में का सिद्ध रहेंगे। ये तो बोलते हैं मैं वाराहन ऐसे लोग दिल आती है ना कारणों पे वो भी करके ना मैं तो ना पर्सनल एसिस्टेंट किए ना वागे आप ही टेलीफोन कन्वर्सेशन में का आधार वो आप क्या खादान लोगे? सो ग्रीटिंग फर्स्ट हाउ यू ग्रीट द पर्सन इट वाज से आंधुन में तो हम हरियाणा में पर्सनल एसिस्टेंट किए ना वाले इगर लाखों में काम हमारा काम है नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इट्स ब्रदा राजदर सो दारा हैज टू ब्रीड बैक शी हैज टू इंट्रोड्यूस हर्सेल्फ एंड आस्क फॉर द सीईओ दैट इज व्हाट दारा हैज टू डू सो यू हैव टू मेक अ सेंटेंस यूजिंग दिस इनफॉरमेशन एंड राइट इट इन दिस given space then personal assistant once again apologizes explains the absence and asks the reasons for calling right so using these you have to write the personal assistance um, dialogue or the person what the personal assistant says okay then once again it's dara so it's basically a, a dialogue between the personal assistant and the and Dara, and you have to use the given information in the brackets, and you have to complete this dialogue. Dara says, "I need to meet the CEO to request a sponsorship for one of our annual events," and the personal assistant says, "Oh, really? Then you can talk to one of our assistant managers in the finance division, Mr. Gihan Pereira." <clears throat> Sorry. Then the personal assistant. Put her through to Mr. Gihan Pereira. So, what are the sentences that can be used when you need to put someone through to another person through a telephone call? Then Mr. Pereira says, "Good morning, Gihan here. How can I help you?" Dara introduces herself and explains the reason for call. Then, what Mr. Pereira says, you have to use the information in the brackets and. Say what Mr. Pereira has to say. Explain that the line is not clear. Mr. Mr. Pereira, someone who phone again, can I give them? Maybe Mr. Mr. Kia, no one, maybe me, or Han, that's why. Did you know? Car no pay only, car again. Right? Then Mr. Pereira says, "Okay, we see what we can do." Then he asks for a contact number. Mr. Pereira asks for a contact number. How does Mr. Pereira ask for? A contact number. That is what you have to write here. 
Then Mr. Vera asks Dhara to repeat the contact number. How do you normally ask a person to repeat a contact number? Then Dara thanks and signs off. She ends the call. How do you normally end the call? What are the words and phrases that you normally use to end the call, right? So that is one exam question that you have got from the lesson on telephone etiquette. And the total marks for this question is eight marks, right? So you might get a similar question for your exam as well. Now I'm going to move our final activity for today's lesson. Okay, so the activity is that you have to write a telephone conversation, right? A situation is given and you have to write a telephone conversation to one of the given situations. You can do it as an individual activity or as a group work. Okay, write a telephone conversation on one of the following situations. Situation number one, you have an appointment tomorrow with Dr. Roshan Ratnayak at 8 a.m. Call his office and try to re reschedule your appointment to next week. You are free next week on Thursday and Friday in the mornings. Okay, part B of uh, the first conversation. You are the receptionist at Dr. Roshan Ratnayak. Sorry, it should be Roshan Ratnayak Kerr's office. Dr. Ratnayak is busy all this week. Next week, he is free on Wednesday afternoon from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. and next Friday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You will soon receive a call. So based on this information, you have to write a telephone conversation. Similarly, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five telephone conversations. You can pick one of them and write the dialogues of these telephone conversations. Right students, so that's all I have for you today. And uh, if I just summarize my points that I explained to you on telephone conversation in my previous lecture as well as today, first of all, I told you what is meant by telephone etiquette. Then we spoke about types of telephone communication and then the importance of a business telephone call and the characteristics of a good business telephone, con sorry, the characteristics of a good telephone, sorry, the characteristics of a good business telephone conversation. And also we practice and develop business telephoning skills. In today's lecture, I mainly talked about how to take a message to the phone, how to transfer a call to the phone, how to end a call in a formal manner. And also I taught you uh, how to handle customer complaints. That is all I have to you on the lesson, telephone etiquette. Thank you.